I consider perhaps even symbolically um, like a symbolic message that uh, one of the most fertile, perhaps the most fertile soil on the earth is now in a country which is now in war, in Ukraine. Yeah, so uh, what perhaps, uh, what can we say about that? Or um, is it, um, I, I, based on my information, like the uh, extremely fertile soil in Ukraine is up to four meters, uh, the back soil, the, the most fertile soil on the, on the earth. Yeah, and so how do we, uh, what do we do? Uh, see, the thing is this, when nations across the world, almost without exception, fortunately, Europe was not going that way after World War II, but now once again they're going that way. Almost every nation has invested enormous amount of money in building and stockpiling uh, arms, armaments, bombs, missiles, smart bombs. I don't know how a bomb can be smart, it's the dumbest thing to do. <laughs> it is the dumbest thing to do. Uh, see, at least uh, if I pick a fight with you with a sword or a stick or something, there is some crude animalistic pleasure attached to it. A uh, thousand people are sitting here, you just drop a bomb, all of them died. I don't know what is smart about that. I cannot understand this. But they are talking about smart bombs, where they are saying from two miles in the sky, they can drop the bomb into your house through the window. They are very proud of this. So there's not one nation, across the world, all right? So all of us as people, were we all thinking, all these bombs are being kept for entertainment, for display or it's artwork, what did you think? One day it will be used. Yes or no? It has to be used somewhere. The question is on whom? The question is not whether it will be used or not. The question is just where and on whom, isn't it? So when it is piling up, we are all okay with it. In every movie, there is no movie without a bomb or at least a smashed face. We are all enjoying it. When it really happens, we say, oh, we're shocked, we're shocked. It doesn't work like that, life. This is why I'm telling you about the soil. Will you grieve after the disaster or will you be that generation will turn the disaster around? This is all the choice we have because this is our time on the planet. How we do our life is our life, isn't it? So, wars are almost inevitable because economies are built on war. Without war, a lot of people cannot survive. The largest industry on the planet is arms and armaments. How will you not use it? If I'm making guns and bullets and I sell it to you and you don't shoot a single bullet, I'm disappointed with you. <laughs> Hello? This happened, I was at the World Economic Forum. At that time, the Sudanese war was going on, you know, terrible war over uh, 2,600,000 people died, out of which 50% were children below six years of age. Can you beat it? 130,000 children die in one war. So, at that time some, you know, movie stars and others are going there and carrying one, you know, an African child is always a trophy. You carry this child and take photo ops and all this is happening. And they showed a video where all these uh, militants or soldiers or whatever you want to call them, they're just going in his pickup trucks, simply shooting at the sky, okay? I said, see, these guys, if I have a fight with you, at least I need to shoot you. If I'm shooting the sky, that means I have abundant supply of, a, of bullets, isn't it? Abundant supply. Otherwise, I won't be shooting the clouds. If I'm fighting a war, when I shoot, I want somebody to die. Yes or no? Hello? I'm not… I'm not going to shoot at the sky, but they're shooting at the sky with automatic weapons continuously. I said, see, somebody is supplying them plenty, all right, otherwise nobody will shoot at the sky. I said, there are sixty-two industries in the world who manufacture that caliber of bullet. I will give you the addresses. Will you go and lock them up? No. You will go to the war zone and pick up a child and do drama. All you need to do is, if you take away the bullets, once that runs out, uh, maybe they will hack each other. But you can't kill that many hacking, at least. If you can't transform the human being, at least you must defang him, isn't it? Hello? Defang. Yeah, <laughs> defang means you take away his teeth at least. If… if transformation is possible, fantastic. If that is not possible, at least 
his empowerment, you should bring it down, isn't it? So, we have no intent of stopping the war, let's be clear about that. When it happens to us or when it happens close to us, we will cry. When it's happening somewhere else, it's drama. This inhuman attitude towards war and to killing and the suffering that other people go through must… Uh, we must come out of that. Because most evil things have happened, not necessarily because of evil intentions, simply apathy. You sleep through life. Is sleeping a crime? Hello? Is sleep a crime? Hello? No, sleep is a good thing. But if you sleep through your life, your life is a disaster. That is what is happening to the world, both in terms of soil, both in terms of… and in terms of war. This is what is happening. We sleep through. After World War II, we formed League of Nations, we made United Nations. The idea was never again such wars will happen, right? Not just for Europe, for the whole world, never again it will happen. But <laughs> since then, how many wars? Actually, if you look at it, there's not been a single day's break on this planet after World War II without at least a battle going on somewhere. So, we have issues. We have economic issues, we have property issues, we have issues, all right? This is the idea of setting up a United Nations that we will fight with our words and solve our problems. We are not in such a la-la land that we don't have any issues, we have issues. We genuinely have issues, isn't it? That two sets of people believe this is it, that is it, there. But this is the idea of setting up a platform which would solve problems. What has happened? Have <laughs> we pushed it to the side and doing what we want to with each other? So, twentieth century, twenty-first century when it began, everybody said, this is twenty-first century, this is the age of information, this is technology, this, that, no wars. Tell me how many wars in twenty-first century? How many nations have been destroyed in twenty-first century? Many. Too many. Too many for twenty-two years, isn't it? So, how do we wake up? See, these are things that you can't turn around overnight, but first thing is, within your hearts, your anger and hatred must go. I must tell you this, I used to attend a lot of uh, world peace conferences at one time. For about two years, two and a half years, I attended a lot of international conferences. Then I saw, for a whole lot of people, this conference hopping itself is a profession, they're making a living out of it. I'm the only idiot sitting there thinking we are working for <laughs> world peace. <laughs> so I was in a, a very prominent conference, forty-two Nobel laureates were participating and a few ex-heads of state and all that stuff. Because when they're head of state, they will do war, after they retire, they will talk peace. <laughs> this has been the way of the world. So, uh, I was here and uh, this is the third day afternoon, one particular <laughs> Nobel laureate, it's his turn to, his turn to speak and after that I'm speaking. So he came up and uh, there is no… this podium is a little exposed, a proper big podium, you know, the wooden thing. So he went and stood behind that and he opened his file. He looked down, he never lifted up his head up, he read forty-two pages. And I was sitting in the front row trying to grasp every word, I'm watching every page, forty-two pages he flipped. Then I look around, the hall is absolutely peaceful. <laughs> because everybody, except the security and a few staff who are standing, everybody has fallen asleep. <laughs> then I thought, this is world peace for sure <laughs> <laughs> Then my turn to speak came and I said, see, uh, in the last three days I've heard so many bombastic speeches about creating world peace. But I'm asking you sincerely, how many of you can place your hand on your heart and say, your mind is peaceful? Because if your mind is not peaceful, if you can't make your mind peaceful, making the damn world peaceful is out of question. Because what you are seeing in the world is a larger manifestation of what's happening in human minds, isn't it? If there are no human beings on this planet, world is peaceful, isn't it? <laughs> so then I inquired, then I inquired why in the afternoon session everybody has fallen asleep uniformly, you know, there was a certain unity about it, except me and this re reader, he's not a speaker, a reader.
Everybody has fallen asleep. Then I asked, what happened? He said, no Sadhguru, yesterday evening there was a Bacardi festival. <laughs> oh, free drink. So everybody became peaceful. <laughs> so, that, uh, that was the last World Peace Conference I went to. So like, let us make the wish to make our minds peaceful globally and I think Olga wants to… No, this is the whole thing. We can't make everybody's mind peaceful. You can make yours peaceful, I can make mine peaceful, she can make hers peaceful. This is the only way it works. This is the problem. We talk about a world, we talk about a society, we talk about a human… humanity. No, all these are just vocabulary. There are only human beings. If this one and this one does not solve their problems, the world's problems are never gone. It will manifest in so many ways. <laughs>